Hey everyone, this is Wobbly Wallaby, and today I'll be talking about the mechanics and bugs for Lost Isles 2F. I personally think this is one of the most buggy weekly instances in the game, which makes it very frustrating for players who can't clear it quickly. I'll show you all the bugs I found so you know how to avoid them. However, not all the bugs are bad. I'll show you how to take advantage of some of these bugs. In this video, I'll go through the mechanics and the bugs. Next, I'll provide some tips for this floor. Lastly, I'll show you a full run so you can see everything put together. First are the mechanics and bugs. The boss has three major skills that will always be done in the same order. A symbol will rotate around the boss's head just before he performs the action. You need to watch how his body moves, and depending on what symbol you get later on, you need to copy this action. First, Sickle Raise, which has the eye symbol above his head. For the first ray, if you're looking at him, you'll be transformed and you have to do the same motion to survive. However, this is bugged, so no matter what you do, you'll die. You just need to look away. The devs giving you three possible actions is just for emotional damage. The theory is, at the bottom right, you can choose clockwise, counterclockwise, or vertical to match the boss's actions. For example, here he does the vertical head movement, and even if I do that, I still fail. Here's another example where I have three people, and we're all doing different motions, and we all still fail. One bug that happens with his rays is if you get too close to the boss, you can dodge the rays completely. Here's my Dorum auto attacking right next to the boss, and the rays completely miss her. The hit detection's a bit off when you're too close. It's not because the Dorum is too short. The same thing can happen with other classes too, like Novice Guardian, who are standing right next to the boss like that. Another bug is if you get revived just as he's announcing a single raise you will have immunity to these rays, even if you're facing the boss. For example, here I revive my Ruin Master as the boss is announcing the rays. Then I turn away. Both of us don't get transformed, even when the Ruin Master is looking at the boss while attacking. I highly recommend that you turn away for this sigil rays. That is the best way to deal with this. If you're transformed, anti-death foods or skills that auto-revive or cheat death will now counter this. Next is the second skill, Imprint of Water, where you need to come together to take less damage. Here, the boss has the water symbol on top of his head. There's a circle on the ground, and I run towards my other party member so we can share the damage. If you're not near your party members, that damage will hurt a ton. If you're tracking the boss's actions, he had a vertical motion for the imprint of water. If you're by yourself, this skill will likely kill you, but you can counter it with anti-death food or skills that counter death. After being cozy with your party mates, you now have to start moving apart in preparation for his third skill. You can see the wood sign above his head, and I start moving apart. I personally think this looks more like a leaf. If you're tracking the boss's actions, he had a counterclockwise motion for the imprint of the past. You need to watch his arms to see which way it spins. Next is the skill Diffusion Ripple, which will put a red circle on the ground that you need to avoid. Here is the first circle, which is within 5 meters of him. You need to avoid going into this circle. After that, he casts one that looks like a red donut, and you need to go either towards him or move beyond the 10 meters.
Next is a component analysis, which is the second ray that he uses during this cycle. Unlike the first ray, this time you need to look at him instead of looking away. You need to transform or you'll die. Also, you'll get a mark on your head, and you need to do the same motion that he did from the previous three major skills. If you do it successfully, then you'll transform back and you can continue. If you fail or looked away, then you're destined to die in about 15 seconds. Your skills will also be disabled during this time. This ray is super buggy, so I would highly recommend you beat this boss before this stage. First, I'll show you an example where things go as planned. You stare at the boss after you see him using the component analysis skill. I find clicking on him to do an auto attack so you face him works the best since you're now facing him directly. Sometimes casting skills can cause you to look a different direction which might cause you to fail. I transform and I have the wood or leaf looking symbol above my head. The right side bar shows this as well. I do the counterclockwise action and it shows as passing. Then I have to wait for it to wear off and then I'm alive. I have seen many instances where looking at the boss doesn't get you transformed during this phase. This is super frustrating because sometimes your key members will die even though they shouldn't have and then you end up wiping. The same thing can happen if you're too close. In this legend run, I'm practically right up to the monster's crotch and I didn't transform. All my skills are disabled too, which means I'm destined for death. you also notice Fiery Fairy was looking at the boss but didn't transform. I wonder if the devs did this just to annoy us. If the boss is close to death, I'd actually recommend the DPS die just before the component analysis. When they're revived, they have the immunity to the rays, so for 15 seconds, they can more or less get free shots on the boss. The boss will still hit you with auto attacks, but you don't have to deal with a lot of his other shenanigans. For the revive immunity trick, make sure you have enough revives by checking your right sidebar. Distance wise, I would stay about 5 meters back when he does this action, so that you have a higher chance of being transformed. Once this is over, the cycle begins again, but it starts to get harder. He has the skill Sigil Summon, which will cause him to summon some of his friends to help fight with him. They're going to have a symbol above his head, and only the people that have that symbol are able to damage it. For example, here I had the eye on top of me, so that means I can only hurt the summon that has the eye. For my novice guardian, I had used the revive trick, so I never got a mark on top of me. Is this a bug? Maybe. As a result, I can't damage any of these summons, but I can still continue attacking the boss. Even if you have the symbol above your head, you can still choose to ignore them and attack the boss. It's just going to be a bit harder with all these bullies around you. Next is the Destruction Ripple. If he can't auto attack someone within the 10 meter range, he keeps sending powerful skills that reaches the whole map, until someone's forced back into his range. In this example, one teammate is dead near the boss, but he doesn't count because he's dead so the boss can't auto attack him. As a result, he keeps sending out the Diffusion Ripples to hit us. When this happens, someone who is tanky just needs to go near him so he can attack you again. Basically, the boss is telling you that he misses you and he wants you to be friends. Next is the spell magic. He summons a purification signal and you can kill these to make sure they don't annoy you. Lastly, his suppression impact is a fan-shaped wave that hurts. It's hard to avoid this since it comes out quickly, so you just have to tank it or stay out of range. Next are tips. First, Sea Spirit Totem is formless, ghost element, large, and MVP. For summons, they are also formless race and ghost element. Cards can help you a lot in this instance. Some great free to play cards for dealing with this boss include the Penamena card for offhand, 
which does damage reduction from formless race. Next is the Marionette card for Garment, which provides ghost damage taken minus 15%. Next is the Marionette Star card for Shoes for ghost damage taken minus 10%. Next is the Malguai card for accessories for damage to ghost monsters plus 15%. This is my favorite card to use against this boss. The 15% damage per accessory is a huge damage boost. Next for weapon cards, you can use the Minoris card for dealing with large monsters, the Peko Peko Egg card for dealing with formless monsters, or the Abyss Knight card for dealing with MVPs. Next are the event cards, which are typically the ones that do MVP damage. The common ones that people use are the Meryl Roland card for offhand, the Heart card for armor, the Mayfair Lintz for garment, Siren for weapon, and Norman for headwear. For late game cards, you can use the Alice Star card or the Anubis Star card for offhand. For weapon, you can use the Drake Star card or the Minora Star card. Next for elements, its type is Ghost, so you definitely don't want to hit it with neutral, otherwise you'll be so sad. You'll only be doing 25% damage to it. You'll also be a little bit sad if you're using Poison since it just does 50% damage to it. If you're able to do Ghost damage, then you'll be able to do 200% more damage to this boss. For the remaining elements, it's 100%. Next, the camera angle on this map is horrible. You have to use the 3D view to see things properly, but that makes your vision very limited. So since the camera angle is so bad, it's best for someone who's good at multitasking to call out the actions in voice chat or write them down in party chat. For those of you who are not primary DPS or support, I'd recommend you volunteer to be the one that calls things out. It's already hard enough for the primary DPS or support to deal with this boss, so you don't want to add even more pressure for them to memorize things or try to see all the actions. Come up with your own system that works. In the full run, I'll show you the system I use in detail. In chat, I use E for eye, D for dagger because I still think that looks like a dagger instead of a water drop and L for leaf, because that symbol doesn't look like wood to me. Then I state what action goes alongside it. For example, C for clockwise, CC for counterclockwise, or V for vertical, where the head just flies up in the air. Basically, just come up with a system that works for your party and do it. Next is a full run. I'm purposely not going to attack so you can see most of the mechanics. When we do this on Legend difficulty, we want to clear this before the second raise happen because of how buggy it is. I open up my chat window so it's easier to type. The eye symbol comes up for Seiko raise. I turn away. You can see his body moves counterclockwise. Next for the Water Imprint skill, we come together because we need to share the damage. I think this looks like a dagger, so I use D and I say counterclockwise. Next we need to move away for the Wood symbol. I call this symbol a leaf, and I see that he spins clockwise. The camera angle is very annoying as the leaves are covering up most of the screen. Now, if anyone opens the chat, they can see what action to do. Now, the boss does his component analysis test. I stay back a bit to avoid the bug where I'm too close to him. I get transformed, which is great. I get the eye, and from the chat, I see that I need to go counterclockwise. I click this at the bottom right of the screen. You have 15 seconds to do this, so you can still discuss things in chat or in voice chat. Hooray, Fiery Fairy and I both did the actions correctly. After that, I finish off the boss because I don't want to deal with any more of those silly bugs. I hope you learned a lot about the mechanics and the bugs for the second floor of Lost Isles. 
the next time something buggy happens, at least you know there's some video proof of this happening. So people won't end up blaming you for not knowing the mechanics when in reality it's the bugs that screwed you over. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe.